Hi and welcome back to another session on copulas. Um, what I'm going to be covering this time is how to simulate copulas or, or simulate random variables using copulas. Now, the first thing to talk about is why we would want to do this at all, which I think is a, a valid question. Then beyond that, I'm going to talk about how to generate random variables, random numbers, and how to use these to generate multivariate distributions, and from those, how to simulate uh, numbers which are joined by various copulas. So, simulating copulas. Um, we talked about what a copula is. We've talked about how to evaluate a copula. We've seen how you can choose a copula and choose its parameters and determine how good the fit of that copula is. So, the next stage from that is once you've got a copula, how do you simulate random variables from that copula? But in many cases, simulation isn't actually necessary. You know, evaluating a copula is enough, particularly if you're looking at single period scenarios, and if the copula is given as a distribution function. So this essentially means if you're using an Archimedean copula, and if you remember Archimedean copulas, the copula distribution function is the formula, whereas if you're looking at an elliptical copula, what you get is a copula density function, which you have to evaluate. So an Archimedean copula, You've got a distribution function, and you've got to have a pretty good reason not to just use that distribution function to plug the numbers in and get your probabilities out. So why might you actually want to simulate um, random variables joined by a copula? Well, a key reason is there might not be a closed form solution. So if you're looking at elliptical copulas where your copula function is in the form of a copula density function, it's actually impossible to just plug numbers in and get a probability out. And unless someone's written a program for you or has come up with some standard tables for you, essentially the only option you've got is to do some random simulations and work out from those random simulations what your joint probability is. Um, also, if you're mod modelling over multiple periods, and particularly if you've got time-dependent parameters, then it just gets a bit too complicated to have anything to um, evaluate other than using simulations. And again, if you've got cash flows involved, so the, the value of your investments, the value of your uh, whatever you're simulating changes over time other than just through, say, returns, then again, simulation is probably going to be the only way you can work out uh, the probabilities any, in any reliable method. And this kind of suggests scenarios which are frequently true for financial modelling. And often in financial, financial modelling, you're going to be using elliptical copulas as well. So when I'm talking about simulation here, uh, I'm going to be talking um, focused on elliptical copulas. I mean, you, you can do simulation using Archimedean copulas. I, you can, if you want, to eat Brussels sprouts every day for a year, but the same question would arise, why do you want to do it? I mean, Archimedean copulas are designed so you don't have to use simulation. So whilst it might be an interesting exercise to do it, it's not usually um, a practical one. Although I'm, I'm sure there are instances where it is necessary, but they're in the minority. So the best way to simulate a copula, use R or Python or some other package. I mean, the, the, people have built this stuff so you can just plug your numbers in and come up with simulations and not really have to think about it too much. It's clean, it's reliable, easy to check the results. Um, so there's a lot to be said for just using that package. But if you want to understand the simulation process, if you want to understand what's happening under the bonnet, and, and also, you know, it can be quite satisfying to, to, to carry out these simulations in, in a spreadsheet-based um, approach, not least because you can then really understand exactly what's going on, and you can help other people to understand exactly what's going on when you're using a copula, and easily look at the difference between different parameters. It's quite tweakable. Um, so, you know, I quite like doing the simulations in spreadsheets as well, and I'll show you how to do that here. Now, the starting point for any simulation is um, generating some random numbers, or, or at least pseudo-random numbers. Um, and these are always uniform random numbers that you're generating. So they are pseudo-random numbers. They're not truly random, but they can appear to be. You know, if you've got a good random number generator, um, then it can the results can pass a lot of the tests 
to to fool you into thinking that they are random, um, which is important because you don't want any biases in there which might distort your results. Whatever random number generator you use, though, you, you should make sure that what you're getting out is replicable. So if you're using Excel and using Excel's built-in um, random number generator, you know, you're probably worth saving those random numbers as values so they don't change every time you hit F9 um, and whoever's checking your results has no way of working out whether your your numbers are reliable or not. Or you can use uh, a specialist add-in which will do your generation for you. So a Merce and Twister um, add-in um, I found quite useful in the past by uh, NT Rand. Um, that's quite nice because it gives you the same random numbers for given seed values that you enter every time. So it does make it more checkable and it's fast as well. And it does also just have a few additional um, tweaks like you know, it, it automatically it can automatically generate multivariate random numbers. So you don't need to use the process I'm describing here. So that's that's quite nice about it as well. Um, so let's look at um, the uh, some approaches for uh, simulating a Gaussian copula, or at least the starting point for simulating a Gaussian copula. Um, because this gives us the framework for all elliptical copulas. So let our starting point be the uniform random numbers UNT for n variables and t observations. So what that means is that um, UNT is going to be between 0 and 1. And you'll have seen if you hit equals rand in Excel, you always get a number between 0 and 1. You're always getting a uniform random variable. Now the first stage is to convert these um, uniform random numbers into standard normal variables. So you want to have x n of t which is equal to 5 to the minus 1 inverse normal distribution of u of n t. Now that's easy enough to do for a single series of random variables. Um, and it's easy enough to do for um, multiple series of un uncorrelated random variables because if everything is random then you know, you, you've got um, a zero correlation pretty much built in. And if you want to get two correlated normal random variables from this then it's relatively simple. So say you've got two variables x1 and x3 so n is 1 and uh, n is 3 and we've got a correlation between them of rho. Um, and you want to have these variables with this correlation. So first you need to generate a couple of independent normal variables, x1 t and x2 t for a whole load of t. You can then calculate x3 t as being rho of x1 t plus the square root of 1 minus rho squared x of 2 t. So that's a very simple way. If you've only got two variables that you're looking at and you know their correlation, this is a very simple way to calculate um, two series of correlated random variables. Now, if you're going beyond two variables, then there's several approaches, but the most common is Kolesky decomposition. Um, and the starting point here is usually a covariance matrix, um, but because we're using copulas, um, so we have standard deviations of one for everything because everything is standard normal, um, we just need a correlation matrix rather than a covariance matrix. So I'm going to give both the covariance and the um, correlation matrix examples just, to, just, just for completeness, just in case anybody does want to just generate some multivariate normal variables. Um, the covariance matrix, you've got the covariance for every pair of variables, and the diagonals are the variances. I've called it, called it S here because we're looking at sample correlations rather than and sample covariances rather than population ones, because you've only got the sample that, that you've got. So you'll notice here the diagonal, sigma, sigma 1 squared, sigma 2 squared, and so on, that's the um, sample variance for all of these variables, and then off the diagonals you've got the covariances. Now, if you look at correlations instead, then the matrix show here is R, and this gives you the correlation between each pair of variables. So clearly here the diagonals are 1, because every variable is correlated with itself, and then the off diagonals are the correlations between each of these different data series. Now, if you're doing Kolesky decomposition, you need to find this matrix called C, the Kolesky matrix, which is lower triangular. 
Now, what this means is that everything above and to the right of the diagonal is zero. It's only the diagonal and everything below and to the left of it which is populated. And this matrix is um, special because if you multiply it by its transpose, so C times C transpose, what you get is the correlation matrix or the covariance matrix if you're, if you're using that. So matrix C multiplied by itself, um, transposed, gives you the correlation matrix. And you know, clearly, if, if I say clearly, if C is lower tri triangular, C transpose is upper triangular. And we'll see that with um, the example that we use. And we'll also see later on why this matrix C is important and, and how exactly you use it. So the Kolesky matrix can be found using a simple algorithm. I say simple, yeah. It, essentially, if you've got this Kolesky matrix uh, with M and N, all the values, if M is less than N, are zero. If M is equal to N, so you've got a diagonal, it's this formula with the square roots, uh, of the, with, with the square root of the variance less this formula involving previous values, and a slightly more complicated formula if M is greater than N. So what we're talking about here is if the row number is less than the column number, then you've got zero. Um, if the row number is equal to the column number, you've got the middle formula. If the row number is greater than the column number, then you've got the uh, formula at the bottom. Now, if you're using R rather than S, so you're using um, a correlation matrix rather than a covariance matrix, it's very similar. It's just you'll see that in the second expression, the variance disappears, and it's now 1, because the correlation between um, any variable in itself is always 1. And in the bottom expression, um, instead of having a standard deviation, you've got a correlation. Now, the point about these formula is that you can only calculate any matrix element if you know the number to the left and above of whatever you're looking at. So the, the way to do to carry this out is to start at the top left corner and work your way down. So here's an example of, of how you could do it in Excel. And what we've got at the top here is um, a correlation matrix. This first block is a correlation matrix. The second block is your Kolesky matrix. The third block is the uh, transposed Kolesky matrix. And the final block is those two matrix multiplied together to show, thank goodness, that you end up with a matrix which looks like the top matrix. So, um, just on here we'll see um, the second matrix down, the Kolesky matrix, the easy bit. The top right red cells are all zero. So yeah, that, that's the easy one to do because we know we're creating a lower triangular matrix, so everything um, to the top and the right is, is red and is zero. The first diagonal cell is quite easy. Um, it is simply the square root of the correlation in the top block. And you know, I haven't got a calculator on me, but I'm pretty sure the square root of 1 is 1. So that bit's fairly straightforward. Moving down the diagonal, it is um, still reasonably straightforward. The, what you do for each one is you take the correlation from that top block and then you subtract the square of each of the cells to the left of the one that you're looking at. And then when you've done that, the result, you square root it. So in this example here, you've simply got the correlation um, of 1, uh, then you subtract 0 0.7053 squared and what you've got left is square root it and that gives you your result. It might be a little bit clearer if you see later cells. So here again you've got a correlation of 1 and then you're subtracting 0 0.7316 squared, 0 0.4167 squared, 0 0.1181 squared, 0 0.3175 squared and the result your square root and that's what you need to do for your diagonals. Now clearly to do the diagonal that we're looking at uh, the number in the diagonal that we're looking at here, you've got to have calculated those for previous values. But you can see the diagonal calculation is, is relatively straightforward. The bottom left cells, they are a little bit complicated. 
So what I've got in this formula here, the, the first bit, 1 over this offset. Essentially, I'm saying whichever column you're in, your starting point um, is the diagonal number in that um, for, for that cell. So uh, for anything in this column here, you'd be looking at starting with um, uh, 1, the offset of, of B11 by column 1 and also a row of the same amount is 1. If I was looking at the next column, my starting point would be 0.7089. The column after that would be 0.8626 and so on. And I'd just be doing 1 over that multiplied by in this case, just the correlation from that top block. So the, the, the first column is, is pretty simple. It does, though, get more complicated. So if I'm looking at, um, say, the second column, my starting point is to do 1 over uh, this offset, which is 1 over 0 0.7089. And then... I'm multiplying that by the correlation, 0.4825, less the product of these two cells here, 0.7053 and 0.4535. And every time I move across a column, I do the same thing, but I move the top cell, 0.7053, that goes down. So again, if I move across a column here, and I'm looking at the final cell, it is 1 over um, that offset, which in this case is 0 0.8626, because it's the diagonal, multiplied by E8, which is the correlation, um, 0.4404, minus um, then C17 times C14, so 0 0.463 times 0 0.4535, and also minus D17 by D14, which is 0.2294 times 0 0.2038. So it does get a little bit more complicated, but if you use that algorithm which I set out initially, these are the numbers that you will come up with. Now the third matrix down, as I mentioned, is simply the transpose of the second matrix. So you can see what I mean by transpose. Essentially, um, everything has been flipped along the diagonal. So um, all of those red zeros that were in the top right, they're now in the bottom left, and they've been replaced by all the blue numbers which are in the bottom left, and the diagonal obviously stays the same. And if you multiply C by um, C transpose, a so matrix multiply, what you find is a matrix which is equal to the correlation matrix, which um, is, is what we wanted to do. So this shows the decompositions work. And if you're doing stuff in a spreadsheet, it's always helpful to do these kind of checks to make sure that the numbers that you thought you were getting um, are the numbers that you wanted. So what is the point of a Kolesky matrix? Why have we done all this? Well, the point of a Kolesky matrix is that if you've got a series of uncorrelated returns and you pre-multiply these by C, the Kolesky matrix, what you get is a load of correlated returns with correlations which are as set out in the correlation matrix. So the Kolesky matrix is a way of taking uncorrelated um, random variables, random normal variables, and creating correlated random normal variables. Um, if you're using the correlation matrix to, to do this calculation, then what you've got is a bunch of zero mean unit standard deviation correlated normal returns. If you use the covariance matrix, then they've got, they're still zero mean, but what is baked in is the covariance between uh, the different variables that you put in at the start. But what we need is zero mean unit standard deviation uh, data. That's what we need for a copula. Um, and if you are using the covariance matrix approach, then all you've got to do then is add whatever your expected return, your expected changes for each of those variables, and you've got some multivariate normal random variables with given standard deviations, given correlations between each other, and given uh, expected values, uh, or you know, which is probably going to be, if you're doing this for financial time series, uh, expected returns. So we've got our correlated random normal variables. 
and we want to get from here to a Gaussian copula. So the next stage is to uh, convert each series that we've got to the required marginal distribution. So for each um, x tilde nt, where the tilde indicates the simulated value, the first thing we need to do is to calculate the normal distribution function. So that's equal to f of x tilde nt, or simply u tilde nt. Because if you've got a multivariate normal distribution and you convert each of the um, numbers that you've got to a uniform random variable, essentially what you've got is a, a Gaussian copula. And if you've got a Gaussian copula and you've got a uniform variable, you can then transform that variable into any distribution that you want to have. So you can, what you essentially do is you use this uh, u of nt, u tilde nt, and use it to derive the simulated value of the variable based on that variable's marginal distribution. So for example, if you've got a t distribution with 5 degrees of freedom, then you simply calculate um, t, 5 degrees of freedom, minus 1, on u tilde nt, and then you scale it and shift it as necessary. So here's a worked example. Um, this is something which I actually did in a spreadsheet to show you how it can be done. Um, we had our Koleski matrix before. Um, we combined that with some uncorrelated normal random variables, and what we got out were correlated normal random variables from the Koleski decomposition. That's in columns B to D here. The next stage is to convert those random variables back to a distribution function. So you'll see that um, in columns B to D, we've got numbers there which are, some are negative, some are greater than one. They're all over the place because they're normally distributed. Converting it back to a normal distribution function in Excel, you just use norm.dist of B13, so the, the, the first number in that, in that array, with a standard deviation of zero, sorry, a mean of zero, standard deviation of one, um, cumulative is true, and that gives you a whole load of distribution functions. As you can, as you can see there, um, everything is greater than zero and less than one. So now we've got these um, distribution functions which have come from this, this Gaussian copula. And now we want to convert them to whatever distribution our uh, marginal distributions have, which are, in this case, a bunch of t distributions. So we know what the mean that we've decided these variables are going to have is, 0 0.05, 0 0.06, 0 0.07, and also the standard deviations, uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.13, 0 0.17. Now, if we're using normal distribution, so if our marginal distribution were normally distributed, you'd simply take your number, multiply it by the standard deviation, and add back the mean. For the t distribution, it's not quite that straightforward because um, if you want to change the, um, the standard deviation of a t distribution, you have to recognize that the scale parameter in a t distribution is not the standard deviation. So in a normal distribution, the scale parameter is the standard deviation. They're one and the same. In a t distribution, the scale parameter is a function of the standard deviation and also the degrees of freedom, nu. So when nu gets exceptionally large, when nu tends to infinity, the scale parameter tends towards the standard deviation. But when you've only got five degrees of freedom, it's not quite um, the uh, it's not quite the same. So what you're doing here is you're taking your standard deviation, squaring it into a variance, multiplying it by um, degrees of freedom minus 2 over degrees of freedom, and then square rooting the result. So you get something there which is slightly different to your um, standard deviation for your scale parameter. Your location parameter, though, that's the same. Now, once you've done that, you then take your, um, your uh, uniform variable there and you apply an inverse uh, t function to that variable with the degrees of freedom, which is in J8, multiply it by your scale parameter, which, as you can see, is slightly different from your standard deviation, and then the result of that, you just add back on the location parameter, so you shift it accordingly. 
and you do that for all three of your variables, which in this case are slightly different degrees of freedom and volatilities and means, and that will get you a series of T random variables which are all joined by a Gaussian copula. So as you can see, it's, it's relatively straightforward. There's just a few little tweaks you need to do in relation to um, scale and standard deviation. Now, the T copula is pretty similar to the Gaussian copula. It's certainly got the same starting point. You're starting with a multivariate normal distribution. But what you want to do in this case is move from a multivariate normal distribution to a multivariate T distribution. So your starting point again is your multivariate normal variables, so Kolesky decomposition. Um, the one thing to bear in mind here is you need to allow for your correct correlation. So if you look back at copulas 3.2, that'll just talk about some of the challenges there. Um, and then you go from this um, multivariate normal distribution and convert it to multivariate T, which is actually reasonably straightforward. Um, to get from multivariate normal to multivariate T, you first got to calculate some another random vector, which is T, as in the number of observations you've got, chi-squared variates with new degrees of freedom. And um, you can generate this directly using some programs, using uh, things like NTRAND will allow you to uh, generate this directly, but it's not actually too hard to work it out yourself. All you need to do is simulate T rows and new columns of standard normal variates. And then for each of the T rows, you square and sum the new normal variates. And the result is uh, a load of T random chi-square variates, which have all got uh, new degrees of freedom. And then the next stage from that is you take all your N uh, variables, your multivariate normal variables, and you divide each of the T rows by the appropriate chi-squared variate, and that will give you a multivariate t-distribution. So that might sound a little bit complicated. Um, it's probably easier to see how you do it in practice. So what we've got here is another spreadsheet and a bunch of standard normal, um, uncorrelated standard normal variables. What I'm looking to do here is to do a um, uh, a t, multivariate t-distribution with five degrees of freedom, so I've got five columns going down as many observations as I've got. And you can see, all I do here is some product um, AC to AG for uh, row 13 for, for the first one. So I'm doing minus 0.71665 squared plus minus uh, uh, 0 0.06224 squared plus the next three ones all squared that gives me a chi-squared variate. Then the, you can see that the next stage is I take that chi-squared variate in each column, I divide it by the degrees of freedom, and I square root the result. Okay? So far, so straightforward. And then I simply take my multivariate um, standard normal distribution that I've calculated before, and um, in each row, I divide the number that I've got by that um, chi-squared based variate. So chi-squared divided by new square rooted. And do that uh, across each of the variables in that row, and then do the same all the way down for the remainder of the rows. And you've got a multivariate t-distribution with five degrees of freedom. So now I've got a series of correlated T variables from multivariate T distribution, and the next stage is to convert each series to the required marginal. So again, what we've got here is X tilde nu NT, where the tilde again indicates the simulated value, and the nu uh, designates the degrees of freedom that we've got. And what we need to first calculate is the T distribution at five degrees of freedom, new degrees of freedom of this variate. This is equivalent to f of x tilde nu nt, or simply u tilde nt. And then, again, we just use this to derive the simulated value of the variable, based on that variable's marginal distribution. So if you've got a t-distribution with 5 degrees of freedom, you simply calculate 
um, T of 5 to the minus 1 on U tilde N of T. And again, scale and shift as necessary. So it's the same process pretty much as using a Gaussian copula. Now again, here's a word example to show you how you do it in practice. And this is just moving across a bit. You can see we've got our multivariate T numbers that we calculated before. And to convert the random variables back to a distribution function, it's pretty much the same as before. It's t.dist of the multivariate number. This time we need to stick in um, the degrees of freedom of 5. True, because it is a cumulative distribution function. And you can see, whereas in columns i to j, we've got things from you know, minus 0.8 or whatever to um, some plus values there. Um, actually, might below that, minus numbers, plus the numbers, not bounded at all. Distribution functions in M to O are all between 0 and 1. So we've got our distribution functions. Then the next stage is exactly the same as before. You've got your mean, standard deviation, and degrees of freedom. Uh, the mean becomes the location parameter. The scale parameter is that adjusted value um, based on the standard deviation, but taking into account the degrees of freedom. And we simply multiply, uh, we simply calculate the inverse of the t distribution, multiply it by the scale parameter, and then shift it by the location parameter. And what we've got here are a bunch of variables which each have a different t distribution, all joined by a t copula. You could just as easily have um, Gaussian marginal distributions or gamma marginal distributions or whatever you want. It's the same principle. You're starting from multivariate t distribution, taking that to a distribution function, and then using that distribution function to generate random variates under whatever marginal distribution you want. So there you have it. That is how you start with random numbers and you generate multivariate distributions turn those into copulas and then combine them with whatever marginal distributions you want to have to get your random variables as tweaked as you want. Um, hopefully that's been useful uh, and has shown you how to do it. Hopefully that will encourage some of you to have a play around with this sort of stuff in an Excel spreadsheet as well. And also to go and learn R to be able to do this stuff on a slightly more robust and scalable package than uh, you'll be able to do with uh, with just Excel.